In today's video, I'll be showing you how to replace your motorcycle steering head bearings. These are the bearings that sit under your triple clamps and on your steering stem and connect your steering head to the steering tube on the frame of your motorcycle. Over time and after thousands of miles or kilometers, these bearings can get worn and or rusty and this will negatively impact your handling. If the bearings have deteriorated enough, they can even become a safety hazard. I'll be showing you how to replace these bearings without the use of special tools. I'm doing it this way because where I live, special tools needed for this job cannot be rented. They can only be special ordered and their cost can only be justified by professionals. There are also almost zero specialized motorcycle repair shops where I live and none of them have the special tools for the job. I'm certain that many places around the world uh, face similar conditions, so I hope that this guide can help you do this repair yourself if you need to. Before you decide to try and replace the steering head bearings, make sure to verify that they are indeed faulty. Elevate your motorcycle and make sure it's stable. Or at the very least lift up just the front part of the bike so that the front wheel is in the air and the handlebars can be moved freely. Steer your motorcycle slowly and gently. If your steering head bearings need replacing, you will notice a particular spot where the steering head sort of catches or snags a bit. This is the area where grooves have been worn into the bearing and the balls inside the bearing want to stay in these grooves. This means that you need additional effort to constantly get the steering out of the grooves resulting in poor handling. When you're checking this, make sure that a cable or any other piece of hardware isn't the actual culprit behind the snag in your steering. Once you have verified that the steering head bearings are the actual cause of the less than smooth performance of your steering, uh, then we can start the replacement procedure. In order to access the bearings, we'll need to remove the front forks. First, we're going to unbolt and remove the front calipers. And move them aside so that they're not in the way. Next, we're disconnecting the speedometer cable. And then we're going to unbolt the handlebar. Before you actually do this, it's a good idea to make markings on the handlebar towers and the bar itself so that you can return the handlebar to the same position. After that, we can start unbolting the forks from the triple clamps. Access to the lower triple clamp bolts is often poor if your motorcycle has fairings, and rounding out these bolts can be very, very bad news. So it's often best to be safe and remove the fairings, so that you can get proper access to the bolts and use a more suitable tool. Once all the bolts have been removed, you can proceed to pull out the forks. And then you can finally realize your dream of becoming a motorcycle yourself. Since the forks are out, you can use this opportunity in case you want to install something like rubber shock covers. Uh, one of the many previous owners of my bike decided to butcher the original shock covers and create some sort of bikini shock cover, which I think looks silly, so I'm getting rid of those and installing proper shock covers. Next, we'll remove any cable brackets and any other hardware that is connected to the triple clamps. After that, we can remove the large nut on the upper clamp. Once the nut is off, you can remove the top clamp. Underneath, you will find the pre-rolled adjusting nut. If you don't have the special wrench, you can easily remove this using a hammer and a screwdriver. Uh, the adjusting nut is never bolted down hard, so there's no need to apply any significant force when removing it. Once the adjusting nut is off, you can remove the dust seal, and the top bearing and pull out the lower triple clamp together with the steering stem. As you can see my bearings are in terrible condition with very noticeable grooves worn into them. The bearing seats are also in very poor condition with lots of rust on them. 
We'll be replacing the bearings with tapered rover bearings. Rovers are what can be found on most modern bikes and they are usually a better and more durable choice because the larger surface area of the rover is better at absorbing and distributing loads. First we'll remove the old bearing seats from the steering tube on the frame. Slowly and evenly knock them out from the opposite end using a long rod or similar tool. Once the old seat is out, clean the area and install a new seat by slowly hammering it in using a socket that is just slightly smaller than the outer diameter of the new bearing seat. Repeat the same procedure on the lower bearing seat. Next we need to remove the bearing from the steering stem. This is often the trickiest part of the procedure when you don't have the special tools. Start with a sharp chisel and slowly hammer it into the gap between the triple clamp and the bearing. This should lift up the bearing slightly and allow you to deform it. In some cases you'll be able to knock the bearing away and be done, but sometimes uh, this isn't possible and you will have to resort to an angle grinder to cut the bearing. Obviously be careful, do things slowly and do not damage the steering stem. Now we can install the new bearing. First install the new dust shield and make sure it's properly centered. Then install the new bearing by gently hammering it down using a screwdriver to contact the inner race of the bearing. Never hammer the outer race in any way. This will damage the bearing and you will need to get a new one. Once the bearing is installed, we can install the lower clamp and the stem from the wall. The upper bearing goes next, don't forget to use the provided grease to grease the bearing. Once the bearing is in, finish things off with the upper dust shield and adjusting nut. Final adjustments to the preload are best made when you install everything else. At this stage just hand tighten the nut to the point where moving the lower triple clamp doesn't immediately loosen the nut. Now you can reinstall the forks in the front wheel, the top clamp, and the handlebar. Now you need to test how everything feels. The steering should move freely with the slightest input. If it feels too tight, loosen the preload nut. Ok, once you're done, get the bike back onto the ground and enjoy.